Tesla home charger charge any faster if it is hardwired compared to if it is plugged into a 240 volt receptacle. Uh, and th this is the home charger any faster than simply plugging an adapter into the 240 volt wall receptacle. Um, asking question to fill time before I get my invite. So uh, I think the, the car itself is kind of what dictates that uh, about the charging speed. And it's about the, it's not necessarily the volts, it's about the amps. Um, and, and I'm not sure how those two things play off each other. Uh, but what I would recommend is depending, here's, here's my general thinking on it. And hopefully this, this clarifies. Um, I, I haven't heard an actual scenario where you need the faster charging at home. That really makes sense. Uh, and, and so the, the, so with that in mind, um, the thing that I think about is, do you have a nice garage or do you have a garage like mine that doesn't have drywall and isn't unfinished and stuff laying everywhere? Um, if you have, you know, a simple garage that doesn't have, that isn't really beautiful or nicely finished, or you don't plan on doing that anytime soon, I would just go with a NEMA 1450 outlet, um, set that up, you know, have an electrician install it, plug it in and you're good. Uh, the, the other one, if you do have a nice garage, if it's finished, if your home is new or anything like that, then yeah, a wall charger is going to look really beautiful. It's going to kind of be a nicer thing to have. I would recommend that. That's how I think about it. Uh, there is a difference. You can go on uh, the Tesla website and there's a, char a charging page where you can actually kind of play with it and see, but I think it's only eight miles per hour difference. And so the only time that I've heard that, that may, may be useful is if you're using your car as an Uber driver and you need to charge up as soon as, as quickly as possible. However, it's tremendously slow. So what you, if you are an Uber driver and you're using your car for that, uh, you probably should use a supercharger uh, instead or a DC fast charger from someone else. Um, Tesla has said that I don't think you're allowed to use free supercharging. I forget what the rules were. Like they're not too keen on people using them for commercial use. Um, but that's also, there's people that are grandfathered in and all these other rules. So anyways, that's the only kind of like situation where I think it matters or it would matter. Um, you know, and unless that applies to you, I, I would just go with whichever one, either you have a nice garage, you want the wall charger. If you have a, you know, garage like mine, then don't get it. It's not, not worth the extra money. Thanks for the question, Tom. Walt asks, once you receive the configuration email, how long does it take usually before they uh, call with the VIN number? I did my config on the 18th of April. I was told my delivery would be three to six weeks. Um, so yeah, I would say it's probably a couple more weeks. I don't remember them calling with the VIN number. I did get a phone call and then they were going to assign me one and then that took another two weeks. I don't think I got my VIN number until maybe uh, the week prior to delivery or something like that. So um, I would expect, you know, pretty close to the time of delivery is when you'll get it. So uh, congrats, Walt. And um, yeah, hope that helps. All right, next, let me see. Uh, next question comes to us from Phil. Phil asks, uh, you emphasize data as a gold mine for Tesla's autopilot feature towards level five autonomy, and it should be a standard package. With your success, with the success and media attention from your GoFundMe couch for Elon, do you think you can start a campaign petition to make this happen? Um, hmm. It is one of the questions I, 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 hmm. If I have a chance to sit down and talk with Elon for an extended period of time, I would love to bring this up. I think it'd be fascinating. I would love to hear his thoughts on it. I don't know if I'll get that opportunity. I don't think an online petition or campaign would really sway their decision in any way. Um, also, I would think it's kind of uh, uh, presumptuous of me or us uh, to, to do something like that, considering we don't fully understand their processes and how they develop these things. Uh, you know... I have a strong opinion about it. That's why I made a video about it. Uh, I don't know if a GoFundMe or any of these other campaigns would really would really have have any legs. Uh, but yeah, if I get the opportunity to sit down with Elon or somebody on the autopilot team per se, or uh, which actually just changed over to a bunch of different people, I don't know if you guys saw all that. Um, then uh, then yeah, I would love to have a conversation because I, I do think that that is a, a good move. Um, but of course there's so many other things that I don't know. So, you know, I don't want to be presumptuous and say like, you know, you guys are idiots for not doing it or anything like that. And I'm afraid that that's how a campaign or petition would come off. So yeah. Um, good, good thoughts. So, and, and yeah, I, I, I would totally love to, to have that conversation with him if, if I get the chance, I'll let you know, of course, if I do. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Phil. Robbie asks, uh, if, 
If there is any defect damage found during delivery, then can a customer refuse delivery? Yes. If so, is another VIN assigned or is there some extra shipping charge or fee charge to the customer? Thanks in advance. Uh, I don't think any of the, the second part, uh, uh, no, I think is the answer to the second part of your question. Um, there have been people that have refused delivery, folks that um, have talked about it. A lot of times if there is any any problems like that, um, usually what they'll do is they'll they'll fix it. You know, they'll maybe say, oh, wow, sorry, whatever. Like, let's, you know, l- l- we'll fix that and then you can have your car. Um, I don't know if there's a, like you get a new car necessarily. Um, although someone did email me about a similar situation where essentially, yeah, they were like, oh crap it. There was some major flaw in his specific car that, um, that they were going to give him a new one. But typically when I've heard of this, it's usually, um, they'll, they'll fix it and then they'll get it back to you in the next week. And, And usually in between that time, they'll give you a Tesla loan or vehicle or something like that. Cool. Thanks for the question, Ravi. Uh, All right. We have a question from Alexander from Belgium. Uh, Thanks for joining, Alexander. Uh, I'm a big fan of of, uh, Brussels. I spent uh, a week there for a work conference a few years back and enjoyed it. Um, And so, yeah, so thanks for joining. Uh, Okay, so you ask, uh, you have two questions. One is about the referral program on the page. Tesla, it quotes uh, up to five referrals, but I suppose that you have a lot more. Uh, Do you still get um, after those referrals, some gifts or not? Uh, n- yes and no. So up to 55 referrals, you get a free Tesla Roadster, which I got back in October, or I earned earned it back in October. Um, since then, um, there's not any other prizes. I think I'm up to 92 now. Um, and I still give my code out um, because I think you know it's a benefit for folks. I don't get any additional gifts or anything uh, that I'm aware of. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, there was a rumor that, uh, you know, if I get to 105, I could potentially get a second roadster. I don't know if Tesla would really let that happen. Don't have any real official word on any of this stuff. Um, which is why, you know, I've, I've seen some people, um, or maybe people have emailed me something like kind of, uh, giving criticizing me for, for pushing my code when it's coming down to a deadline but honestly, I haven't got any benefit by giving my code out since October. So I think, you know, people should like have some context before they start throwing out accusations and getting getting angry. But, you know, who, who really cares? Everyone uh, deserves the right to be angry at somebody. And um, I tend to be that person sometimes, as we all do on, online. Thanks for the question, Alexander. And thanks for joining. Uh, Ted asks, Ted S. asks, Ben, do you think all uh, Model 3 first production orders will be fulfilled in the U.S. before Tesla adds dual motors and rear wheel and four wheel drive, same thing, um, options? My Tesla estimate date for a first production model is uh, August to October 2018. Ted in Tennessee. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think that maybe July um, is when we're going to start to see the, the all wheel drive. Uh, I hope that's when we start to see it. Maybe a performance model. Ooh. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think it will be all of them. Um, I think it uh, it depends on date. And then there's probably a lot of people that have that have said, "Hey, I want the all-wheel drive version because I live in a cold place, or you know, or I just want it for whatever reason." So I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna gonna pan out that way. Um, but yeah, I, I hope they speed up production. I hope you get your car sooner. Thanks for watching, Ted. And thanks for the question. Look at this. This is a great name. Matovani. Um, hi, Ben. I love your channel. Since I'm based in the UK, when do you think it will arrive here? And can you guess a predicted price using data from previous models? Also, do you think they'll introduce all the options available in the US or will they go in stages uh, for right-hand steering? That's a good question. I'm not sure about that second one. I would imagine that at that point that they, they do it. Because if I understand correctly... Um, and I don't recall where I heard this, maybe Ryan's podcast or something, uh, for the right-hand drive ones, they're not assembled uh, entirely in Fremont where all the other ones are because they're, you know, they'd have to change some of the equipment out. And so they're actually, I believe, assembled, final assembly is done in Germany um, or Belgium, and, and then they're shipped around uh, from Europe. So uh, I'm, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um about that. Uh, as far as when, I believe next year is when they said that they'll be uh, uh, talking about this, but, but, but we'll find out. 
We'll find out. Thanks for the question, and uh, I hope it's soon. I hope it's soon. I'll be I'll be in Europe uh, this fall as well. So maybe that'd be cool if they were they were there around that time. All right, Phil asks, Hi Ben, how do the LED headlights on your Model Three work in dimmed beam as opposed to main beam? Is this a software controlled function? I am only used to I'm only used to non LED headlights, which use differently focused lights to do this. Moreover, in the UK, when we cross to a mainland Europe and drive on the right, we have to use adaptive lens covers on the headlights. Otherwise, the headlights dim the wrong way. Oh, that's funny. You didn't think about that. Um, maybe this could uh, be offered in the UK Model Three. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, as of right now, I don't believe that's a setting. In fact, there have been several times when I'm trying to turn the headlights off and, and it like takes me a while to find them because, you know, for whatever reason, I'm trying to turn them off. But, uh, I don't recall seeing that setting. I would have to go look. Um, these are all things which are why I believe, you know, it makes sense for Tesla to have, uh, you know, like a plant in Europe because there are all these little local considerations and nuances that, uh, you know, let's say people in California would never have never have considered. And I'll give you a quick aside from that. One time, um, I used to work for Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox, and I was there helping with the launch of Firefox OS, which is the uh, mobile operating system. And we were launching phones in different countries. And in order, and I think I thought it was brilliant by the product team. They actually sent the developers uh, of the software for the phones down to the countries and regions that they were launching in. Um, that way they could actually work to handle their local things. Like for example, in Latin America, you often have multiple SIM cards because doing a call to someone else on a different network is like doing a long distance call. It's extremely expensive. So a lot of people will carry multiple SIM cards with them if they're calling certain friends or whatever. Um, and so we developed a phone then with a, a man, Motorola or somebody, I forget, um, that actually had multiple SIM cards you could put in it. So you could put one for each different, uh, like Mobile or Movie Star or um, uh, Tele, I forget. But but anyways, you could have different SIM cards for the different networks. And then the software in the phone would actually just auto detect who you were calling and use the correct one. So I think, and we would have never known that um, had we just, you know, been in our like sweet, cool offices in San Francisco. So yeah, I, I, I do think it's important for Tesla to have a presence in these places because of these nuances that you mentioned here. And I hope they get it figured out for you. Thanks for the question, Phil. Vic asks, um, still hoping for updates on all wheel drive, air suspension and performance models. Me too. I did see someone spotted a, a white interior one. Um, which I don't really care for, but I know people are into that. So maybe that is it. And I remember there was the Fron sighting where he had one with 20 inch wheels that people were, were, uh, were, were guessing was the performance model. So yeah, thanks for the question. I'm hoping for an update on that too. I would love to be able to, to do buy a performance model. Let's see. Peter asks, got my build email, Montreal. Congratulations. Email states that I can hold my spot for the four-wheel drive when available. Do you think that will happen to be Q3 or Q4? Q3 is a good guess. I would say earliest. I'm not sure about for Canada, though. Um, but yeah, I mean, Elon had said when they get to 5,000 a week, which uh, th which he he uh, he speculated would be July. That also matches up with my, my forecast model. So yeah, uh, Q3, I mean, Q4 for sure. Uh, I, I don't know about Canada for them, but I would assume that, I mean, there'd be no reason not to at that point. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Peter and congrats. And I do hope to visit Montreal someday. Um, I hear it's a wonderful, wonderful city. So thanks. Tom asks, do you have a guess yet when the dual motor option will cost when they announce them? Uh, we are in Pennsylvania, which means that it is kind of a toss up for us at $4,000. It might be worth it at $6,000. It is likely not. Well, uh, I believe Elon had tweeted saying it would cost less than the Model S, and the Model S is $5,000. So, uh, you know, I'm guessing $4,999, um, you know, just to, <laughs> to, to, to the letter of the law, not, not the intent. Um, but yeah, $6,000, I would say is very unlikely that, that it would cost more than $5,000. So if you, if you budget five, I think you'd be safe. That's my guess. Thanks, Tom. Israel asks, uh, when do you think of the next Tesla event? Uh, well, I'm going to deliver a couch. I don't know if that counts as a Tesla event. It's not, it's not a public thing. We're just going to anyways. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's going to be, uh, so there's four events I'm looking forward to this year. Uh, driving a boring machine. Not if that counts as a Tesla event or not. Um, Model Y unveiling, not announced, but speculated. 
the driving a, a Tesla Semi, which uh, which me and a few other folks, are, a bunch of people are going to do, uh, are racing a Tesla Semi. Uh, uh, apologies. Um, and then, uh, oh, and then the Falcon Heavy launch is the other one that, that I'm looking forward to this year. So um, other than that, I don't know. Um, I would not be shocked at all if instead of doing an equity raise to build out the Chinese factory, what they did is they just launched the Model Y and took reservations down with the 2020 um, delivery date. And, you know, they, they get another three or 400,000 of them in the first night as well. I would not be shocked at all if we see that this year. In fact, I'm kind of expecting it. Thanks for the question. Annie asks, hi, I'm in the UK searching for electric utility van to transport kids and goods. White van land is running a national joke. Is a running national joke because there are millions of them on the roads. Historically, it's difficult to drive larger trucks, transport goods due to small, windy roads, yada, yada. Um, yeah, would Tesla consider a small utility vehicle van to cut emissions? I, I, I think they should. I think that was a smart move. In fact, I, I expected to see that at the Tesla Semi event, but we didn't see it there. Um, and so I would not be shocked at all. I'm not sure about the farmer construction vehicles, but you know, they've got the Tesla Semi, which is kind of in this, in this realm. Um, and I think that that would be probably where, uh, I think it would make a whole lot of sense for these little like delivery vans. Um, like uh, what we call here, we call it a Dodge Sprinter, but it's actually made by Mercedes. So I forget, I forget what, what the version of it is there, but, um, yeah, I, I agree. I think they should. I think it's a huge, uh, market potential. Um, you know, but everything takes time and money and they got to have a strategy and we already know the next two or three models coming out and it's not one. So hopefully we'll see that, uh, rumored, you know, sometime soon. Cause I think that's a big market. Thanks for the question, Annie. Matavani asks, how much does the Tesla Model 3 cost per month with the upgrades that you got using the Tesla financing? So uh, I, I would recommend you go to my website at teslanomics.co. There's a calculators button and there's one there called Tesla Model 3 cost calculator. It'll tell you all that stuff. Um, you punch in, you tell you how much it'll cost in, in fuel or in energy per month, um, insurance, all those kind of things. So go check.